All right. Let's see. Harry Mack, if you'd like to go ahead with the first question. Hey, Lance, Harry Mack from the Bookies Basement. I hope all is well. So uh, I just wanted to ask you, um, what would you say the biggest differences are between uh, the old World Series of Fighting and the PFL as it's currently constructed? Uh, you can't really compare those two, I don't think. There's a completely different, completely different format as far as the system for the fights and the season compared to World Series of Fighting was just... Um, trying to find guys to be able to fight the title holders at the time and um, trying to hold enough shows in a year to stay afloat. I mean, it was completely different from this. It was, um, I would say the, the organization was a lot different as far as being less organized than the format that we're in now. Uh, I mean, I went either six or eight months between each fight and it was um, it was it was awesome, but it was basically in its infancy of the organization that we are now with PFL. I mean, it's it's completely different from the the people who are helping run it. To um, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of people that came from World Series um, on the backside and are in PFL now. But I feel like the format that we have, the organization that we have. There's just a lot more things, and I I feel like um, we've all we've all seen the way that World Series was run, and we brought all the positives from that, and just took off with it for PFL. Awesome! Thanks so much. Good luck. Thank you, Tom Ward. Hi, Brandon. Tom Ward from Gimme Sport. Hope you're well. Um, I just want to ask you. Obviously, you're the two-time champ, right? But do you feel like there's a certain element of added pressure do you feel like you've got a target on your back or are you just so used to going through the motions that it's just i don't know an everyday for you um i get this question a lot but i feel like the target on my back has been there since i was like 10 years old in wrestling so it's not really i don't really consider it anything i'm chasing my own goals and everybody else just has to catch up to try and chase me that's kind of the mentality that i have and it's it's not a um overconfident or cocky mentality it's just the the way that i was raised and the mindset that my dad told me to have and there were some times where i would go into matches not as confident as i should have been for the work that i would put in to get there so i think having that confidence and and that ability to kind of distance myself from the other competitors that i compete against is that's mainly it, just knowing that I put the amount of work in that I have and and it's started at a young age. It wasn't like I started fighting at 24, but I've been competing my entire life. So um, the competition is why I do it over anything else. So I think competing for so many years, you just get used to the, the same stress of every competition. And it's just the stress is all the same. There's just different levels of it. That leads me on nicely to my next question. Obviously, you and Bubba have a bit of a shared history. Um, and he's been in the press recently saying he beat you for a Big Mac and an orange soda. Um, could you just touch on that a little bit? Like, th obviously, the relationship between you two in terms of college wrestling and everything, does that kind of give you a bit more of an added edge? Um, I don't know. I mean, I was 13 years ago when we wrestled, and he beat me more times than I had beaten him that year. That's basically all it comes down to. I mean, that was 2008. So if he's dwelling on 2008, then I hope so, because I mean, this is a completely different sport and I'm a completely different athlete than I was in 2008. And uh, I mean, there's not really much to touch on there. I mean, we do have a history, so that's, I guess that's what he's trying to hang his hat on. Um, my final question to you is obviously you're locked in a bubble at the moment. Um, have you bumped into any of your potential opponents like what's the reaction been like um i've seen a couple guys like obviously brennan just walked out but i don't have any like i don't walk around just like trying to be a tough guy and like try and fight everybody I, i'm super low-key um kind of stay to myself but i like to joke around i like to have fun and even if i am fighting somebody i don't have i don't have to dislike that person to go in there and be able to try and beat them in a fight. So you fight for 15 or 25 minutes and 
that's it. Like I, I don't really have like an added edge against anybody as far as like trying to act like a tough guy walking around the hotel or, I mean, that's people that do that. I feel like they just lack confidence. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time and good luck on Friday. Thank you. Mark LaMonica. Lance, hello, Mark LaMonica from Newsday. Um, obviously a two-time defending champion. This year, format's a little bit different. Only four people go to the uh, go to the playoffs. What do you think that's going to do for people? I mean, obviously the league is always incentivized finishes, but now it's a lot harder to sort of coast and get that decision and feel comfortable with what's going to happen. So what are you expecting to see now that only top four go? I don't think we're going to see anything different. The The new format, all it does is take four people out of the playoffs so it doesn't really make much sense because you could have you could have five people with finishes and still have four people only making it i don't know it's um it's interesting but my goal is to win and if i win my two fights and don't get in still that puts me at a 13 fight win streak and still happy and still winning and maybe other opportunities arise so We'll see. I mean, I'm just focused on Friday right now, but the new formatting of it is definitely, uh, I don't think it changes anything. Everybody already has that urgency that we have to try and get finishes and do our best out there. So I think in the regular season, you just focus on getting your wins and nobody is really focused on finishing a fight when you go into it. You're just focused on going in there and doing your best. And if the finish comes, then that's great. Um, I don't think I was the number one seed going into the playoffs in 2018. Um, I don't even think I was a top two or three, actually. So I don't really care about the seeding. I just care about winning. And uh, if winning doesn't get me in the playoffs, then not much else you can do there. But if you look at every other sport that has a system in place and say football, you win more than half of your games or you know, say you win 12 games out of 16, you're going to be in the playoffs 100% of the time. So if you win both fights and don't get in the playoffs, it doesn't really make sense for a playoff structure. But that's, uh, I guess that's its own <laughs> different conversation. And then uh, just one more. Um, you've been in this fight game a long time, you've seen it all. For you, what's the hardest thing about a fight? At this point in my life, it's probably being away from my family, maybe. Um, the training, all the training is the same. I mean, in my 30s now, I, I think being 34, I think the, the training has changed a little bit for doing the right things and the right recovery and making my, my body feel the best that it can feel on top of training hard at the same time. So training harder but smarter as well. But being away from family, being away from uh, the wife and daughter, that's probably the biggest change over the last eight weeks for me. Um, other than that, nothing really has changed over the last 10 years. Just uh, my focus has changed and um, the reason why I fight has changed a little bit. But other than that, nothing really crazy has happened. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Sergio. Do you have a question? Yes, uh, this is Sergio from the Fight Podcast. Uh, Lance, you are multiple time champion. You've won this tournament multiple times as well. <clears throat> this season, with all this, they added star power this season. Would winning it this season have any more significance to you? Um, I think each season has had its own significance. This would definitely be um, a great season to win with the competition, but as well as the circumstances that we're in, I mean, we're in this bubble. This is our 14th day in the bubble right now, and it'll be 17 by fight day. So I think we're, uh, we're in a unique scenario of seeing who can handle these situations. And I, I think the next regular season fight is going to be exactly the same as far as 17 days in here and um, dealing with that on top of everything else that goes on outside of the bubble with, other businesses that people run and families and things like that. So I think that's the main significance is we're dealing with a lot of things 
outside of the bubble. I mean, not everybody has other things going on outside of here, but I do. So there's a lot, a lot going on on the back end as far as dealing with daily things that go on for my other two businesses outside of me just being stuck in here and then having a family at home also and making sure that everything's good on that end and getting help for my wife and daughter if they need it. And that's basically it. I mean, I don't think there's added significance because of the people that are in here. Danny. Hey man, it's, uh, Danny for MMA Junkie. Um, just a couple questions on on, on Bubba. Um, he was very respectful, but he did kind of mention that he, he feels like he has an edge over you just because of your history and, and wrestling. Obviously, it's a different sport that does involve wrestling, but um, and also it was a long time ago. But do, do you feel like there's something to that? Do you feel like he has an edge, or do you feel like you maybe have something to prove since uh, I guess you, you, you didn't have uh, too much success, according to him, um, in, in your wrestling days? No. Not at all. Yeah. And um, you, you just mentioned it, like being away from your family. I know you recently had a, a baby girl, Rats, by the way. Thank um, you. Is this the, the most uh, amount of time that you've been away from her? Pretty much her whole life so far, <laughs> except for weekends. So, yeah, it's um, – and she's only nine weeks old. So we're looking at the first, like, two weeks uh, or week and a half that she was alive. I was there the whole time. But – um, basically Saturdays and Sundays were the only times that I was, uh, home during this entire camp and then add this 17 day quarantine on top of it. I haven't seen her since before, you know, two weeks ago, basically. So yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely weird. Like watching her grow on FaceTime and pictures and videos instead of in person. Thank you. Good luck in the tournament. Thank you. Up next, Curtis. Hey, Lance, this is Curtis from the Big Curtis Show. Um, hey, man, I want to say congratulations, man, on the new baby girl. Thank you. Um, uh, I know you've been training, and I've, I've been seeing you train with, you know, people like TJ Dillashaw, Juan Archuleta, you know, the guys in Jersey, Frankie Edgar. How are these guys going to help you improve your performance, man, um, this season? Um, I've been training with these guys since the 2019 season also, but I think it's um, – I just – I've always been close with Juan and TJ and um, Brian Ortega had a fight coming up with uh, Volkanovsky. So I was giving him looks for his fight and, you know, we were getting good training in there and Cub Swanson had a fight coming up also, I believe the week after my fight. So I've had a lot of good guys to train with and we were all in camp at the same time. And it's just a similar mindset and similar uh, attitude going into it. And, Juan and I have been really close for a long time. We're, our families are pretty much family. So I think, honestly, the, over all the training and, and obviously the good work that we get together, I think it's the, the family environment and the friendship and everything else. I mean, we know how to train super hard together and, and not hurt each other. And I think that's being a good partner and being a good teammate is a lot of that. And Frankie and Eddie in New Jersey and all the other guys in Jersey, they're the same exact way. I mean, that's why we have such a small team out there is because everybody is tight knit. It's like a family there. And um, Mark Henry, Ricardo Almeida, Nick Catone, all the coaches, they're, they're all great people. And, and once I started training there in 2019, it was like instant. I became family and became close with those guys. And they were all people that I admired and looked up to before I even trained with them. So for them to bring me in and just be part of their team and, and have that like-mindedness and the uh, same mentality and mindset going into training was, it was just easy. It's easy to train with people who are like-minded. Lance, I thank you, man. I wish you the best of luck this season, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. We'll take our last question for Tariq. Hey Lance, what's up, man? It's Tariq from the Havoc Hour. What's going on, brother? Hey, listen, so we've heard from you a lot about how the, the inactivity last season was real frustrating. And, you know, now you're facing a guy in Bubba who, you know, has somewhat of a history with. Was there anything different that you might have done in training camp this year to kind of get reacclimated? 
Not really. I honestly felt really good getting into camp right away. Um, I th- I don't know if it was from having a lot of the rest and being able to train when I wanted to train last year and not having to train through injuries or just having uh, open mind and freedom to do whatever instead of getting ready for five fights in a row. Um, so I would I would say the the biggest difference was just being fresh and my mind being fresh, my body being fresh, kind of like a clean slate coming in for this fight camp. Um, that was the main thing. And obviously when it comes down to having inactivity, he's been inactive way longer than me. So I think um, I don't really look into that stuff too much. I know that a lot of people talk about ring rust and things like that, but um, it's been a lot longer that since he's fought last um, compared to the last time that I fought. So I feel like if we have any advantages that that may be one of them too. Also, I know you're not really a big talker, but I know Bubba had a prediction of finishing the second round. You got a response for that? Yeah, he's talking about me finishing him probably. <laughs> hey, good luck, brother. Thanks, man. Good talking to you. All right, we're actually going to take one or two more questions. Uh, let's go with uh, let's go with Curtis. I'm sorry. I just answered my question. I forgot to put my hand down. I'm so sorry. <laughs> let's. Oh, um uh andrew benjamin hey lance uh andrew with mma uh when we when bubba was on uh on the uh, press conference just previously he predicted a second round knockout against you i'm curious to know do you have a prediction for how you will uh make the fight go in your favor i think you just missed my answer a second ago but i feel that i'm gonna finish him i did i don't know what round or I don't really care to make a prediction, honestly, but um, but I do agree. I think if he catches me and knocks me out is the only way he can win this fight. Great. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Sean. Uh, hi, Lance. Uh, there's uh, Sean Sheen here from uh, Severe Med. There's been a lot of talk recently about the best featherweight in the world, whether it's Patricio Pitbull, Max Holloway, uh, or Alexander Volkanovsky. Where would you put yourself in that talk, and do you think you your name belongs with those names? I think so. Um, I did do an interview about this, and they asked me some questions about it. Um, it's just it's hard because I don't get to compete against any of those guys. Um you, you look at that, you look at those guys and they're kind of in a promotion that has been around for a long time. Um, the competition is well known there. Uh, the marketing is great there. They, I mean, they have their ranking system, their own ranking system, and, and that's kind of what people go off of. But I feel that I'm in the conversation for best featherweight in the world. But until I get to face one of those people, that's the only way I get to prove it. I can't really prove it no matter how tough this roster is. And I know a lot of these guys on this, pretty much everybody on this roster is really high level and everybody's really tough, but it's not going to prove that I'm the best featherweight in the world. The only way the, the main core group of people or media or anybody else is going to think I'm the best featherweight is if I fight one of those guys and get to beat them. And that's really it. I mean, we could talk all day, but, until I get the opportunity to actually fight one of those guys who everyone else considers is the best, then it'll just be talking. Do you think that so this will be your last uh, tournament at PFL and you're going to try to move on to the UFC or one of the other organizations to prove that? I don't know. We'll see. I think um, for now, I'm just focused on this Friday, obviously, and um, I'm really happy with being able to fight again and, and this season of PFL, but... Um, like I talked about a little bit ago with you could win both your fights and still not get in the playoffs. So that may change things for the future also. So we'll see. I'm just focused on this Friday and then, uh, we'll go from there. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Matthew. Last out media. Uh, yeah. Hi Lance. How you doing? Uh, we're sort of dancing around this, you know, best in the world at featherweight thing. And I was wondering, is there any perhaps skill or, or something that you do that you think you are the best in the world at? Yeah, I think I could take anyone down and that changes the course of the fight. And with all these other organizations being able to throw elbows, we haven't 
obviously we can't throw elbows in PFL and that's a huge part of my game and opening guys up on the ground and being able to get to my submission game. So I think that changes a lot of things. If I were in a fight where I could get a takedown and throw elbows and set up my other stuff on the ground. So, I mean, a lot of people are high level wrestlers in the sport, but not many people are able to use their MMA wrestling to get to those positions and take people down who usually don't get taken down. Um, a lot of, I mean, all of those guys that are being mentioned are all uh, striking based. I mean, Holloway has a good ground game, jujitsu based game, but not a wrestling based game. And, um, and I've trained and sparred and competed with the best featherweights in the world at one time or another. And I know that I'm at the top of that. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Our last question for real this time, we'll go to Darnell. Hi, Lance. This is Darnell Giovanni with MMA Island. If you win the competition again this year for the third time, you have any intention on maybe going to lightweight and seeing if you can win a championship there as well? Um, not really. I feel that I'm a true featherweight. I don't think that'll help the conversation for me being the best featherweight. I think the only other option would be to go somewhere else and compete against the guys that the media talks about as being the best featherweights in the world. So. I think that would be the only option from here or bringing one of them to the PFL. So I don't know. I, I, it's hard to focus on things that far ahead with um, my focus being on this fight this weekend, but obviously it'd be great to get the, to get the wins again this year and, and end this season on a high note and then, um, you know, start the negotiating from there. So we'll see, but I think just proving that I'm the best featherweight is is my main goal and whatever it takes to do that is obviously, you know, not all of it's in my hands just because the other top guys that are being considered are in other organizations right now. So that's kind of hard for me to prove anything this year except continue to do what I'm doing, continue to win, continue to beat these guys that are here uh, right now and kind of solidify myself as the best featherweight here and then move on from that. Good luck on Friday, Lance. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Lance. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.